gonna talk about cracked kayaks. Cracks, cuts, punctures, holes, dents, scratches, and fractures on kayaks come in many shapes and colors. And each one of those can be repaired in a different way. Today, we're gonna look at a major crack. Now, the guy that had this kayak liked to stand on the deck a lot, which, to be honest with you, is awesome. I don't stand a lot on my kayaks, but a lot of people do. And this kayak, for some reason, ended up being a little bit weak on the top deck. As you can see here, the crack goes from all the way up here, down this, all the way around. This crack isn't gonna hurt this kayak from floating, not at all. As a matter of fact, I've been using this kayak for quite a while and had no problems out of it whatsoever. With that said, if it's a big wake and I'm getting a lot of splash over the deck or it's raining that day, this kayak will take on water through this crack. So we need to repair this. Due to the nature of this particular crack, we're gonna put a little bit more effort into it than I normally would with, say, a crack if it was up here or one that was on the side. The reason for that is this is where I step in and out of the kayak. So I wanna make sure this is durable. Now, I'm not gonna go into where you can find HDPE. The reason for that is that YouTube alone has a plethora of information it's easy to come by on how to get your plastic, where to get your plastic, what plastic to use, and so on and so forth. Now, this is a blue kayak, so I just happened to pick a blue bucket from Lowe's to cut up. There are quite a bit of videos on how to repair these cracks on kayaks. There's anything from step one to step 20. The problem I'm finding is a video that has step one through 20 in it. So that's kind of what we're gonna do. The very first thing you need to do is you need to stabilize the crack. Now, if I push in on this deck, you can see the two parts move independently. Now, because those two parts are moving independently, the ends of those cracks are actually weakening. So the cracks are actually getting bigger. And we don't want that. We want to stop that and stabilize this crack. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill a small hole here at this end and a small hole here at this end. The one thing you need to look at here is to make sure that your drill bit isn't very big. You want to be a little bit bigger than the crack but you don't want to be really big to where you're putting another big hole that you got to fill in it. Okay, so now we're gonna clean up the crack in the area around the crack. So go get one of your wife's really good dish towels and some acetone, just kidding. Don't go get the dish towels. She'll hurt you. But you do want to get a rag and some acetone. You can use soap and water for this. I just happen to have some acetone around. It works just as good. You want to make sure the area is really clean. You want to come out about a half inch to an inch past the line of the crack and you wanna go past the ends of the crack about an inch to a half inch, as much as you possibly can anyway. The cleaner you get it, the better this bond's gonna be. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sand the area, lightly sand the area. Now what we're doing is some kayaks have textures. They have a bumpy kind of factory texture to them, especially where the decks are, so that way you don't slip on them and so forth. This particular kayak has a bumpy texture, so we're just gonna kind of rough that up a little bit. Don't use anything more than 150. I use 120 usually, I got 150 today, uh, but don't go anything less than 100 because it's, it's really gonna tear into the plastic. I have found 150 to 120 to work the best. Again, just lightly, lightly sand it. The cleaner those two marrying edges are, the better seal you're gonna get on your repair. The sandpaper is also gonna get rid of all those very small little hair-like pieces of plastic that are hanging around. Now you're gonna have to clean it again. So grab your rag and your acetone. Mine's still got some on it. At this point, you're taking all the plastic dust off of it. This doesn't have to be perfectly honest. It doesn't have to be great because most of that plastic dust is gonna melt once you get 
your mirroring surface put together anyway. You're just trying to get all the loose stuff out of there. The next thing you want to do is to add some pressure underneath what you're working on. In this particular case, where this is at, due to the contour of this deck, it's very stiff in this area. So the only place I would worry about really is right here at the very end, but I'm not really concerned too much about it. Now, if I just melt these two surfaces together on top, it'll stop it from leaking, but we want stability. Remember, we're gonna be stepping up and down on this. Now, you could go overboard and you could put a big patch on it, I don't think we need that due to the contour of the deck here. We got a lot of support in that contour of that deck. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a V or a U channel in that crack line. And what that's going to do is that's going to push some of that plastic out of the way, get down deeper in that crack so we can lay some plastic in there and stabilize that a little bit better. I picked up this soldering iron on Amazon for, I think, just 13, 15 bucks, something like that. It came in a kit and it's got all kinds of new different tips on it and everything. It, you can use a screwdriver. I, I've seen people use butter knives. Pick your tool and go with it. Now, as you can see, that is already starting to come together. And if all I wanted to do is seal this up, I can just put plastic over plastic and it would be done. But we want support. Every now and then, you're going to have to clean off your tip. Just get a piece of wood or something, rub the tip on it. Don't worry about it. Now, once you start pushing that plastic out of the way, go ahead and flatten it out to both sides of the crack. This little area is a little harder to get to. Now we're going to fill that V up just a little bit. Be sure to go all the way to the end. So now that we got that filled up, we're just going to level it off a little bit. If you heat this plastic up too fast, it will burn. You don't want to burn it. Then you got to take that out, add new plastic, and start this whole process all over again. Goodness gracious, we don't want to do that. Okay, so the last thing we want to look for is holes and infractions in what we've done so far. Remember I said that our neighbors are crab guys? Yeah, they just started their big diesel. That's loud. So now that you got that done, go back and sand it again. So now let's clean it up. And you're going to do this until you feel they're flat enough. Just, you know, wash, wrench, repeat, that kind of thing. So now that you got a fairly smooth surface on it, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hit it with a little bit of heat. Now, I would not recommend hitting this with a blowtorch. If you can get a heat gun or a really good blow dryer, that would be best. Remember, we're just going to heat the surface up till it's a little shiny. All we're going to do is where you sand it, it's got those little hairs, and we're just going to melt them little hairs down to make it a better surface. So now we're going to let that cool and then we're going to test it out. Now make sure before you test this out that you touch the material, make sure it's not hot to the touch. It can be a little warm. I mean, you want it as cool as possible. I've let this sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. It's about 60 degrees out here. And I will tell you, it's barely warm at all. It's almost right to the temperature we needed it to be. So let's test it out. Now don't go running your car on it or jumping up and down on it like an idiot. 
You want to apply some pressure to see if it moves. All you're going to do is you're going to apply a little bit of pressure at a time. And what you're listening for and what you're looking for, you're listening for pops to see if anything pops loose. And what you're looking for is anything loose that might come undone on top on the surface. Let's see what we got. Now you can see here it's already started to come loose on me. I didn't wait long enough for my plastic to set up and it did start to let go. Not in the crack, but just on the edge there where I applied the extra plastic. All I did was heat it back up, throw some more plastic in it, smooth it out, sand it, wash, rinse, repeat, and it's good to go now. If you like what you saw today, hit that like button. If you think this is going to help somebody else, share it with them. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button.